Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of limits. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here, the question tells us to find the value of a limit, which is x approaching to 0. And the expression given to us is e raised to 2 mod of sine x minus 2 times mod of sine x minus 1 divided by x square. And the question in this has given the answer choices as the first answer choice being that the value of this limit is equal to 1. The second answer choice given to us here is that the limit does not even exist. The third answer choice given to us is that the limit of this expression is equal to minus 1. And the fourth answer choice says limit is equal to 2. So let's figure out which one of the answer choices is the correct answer choice here for the question that is asked to us. Before starting off with the solution for this question, I'd first like to tell you that please do subscribe to my channel and support the channel as well because it takes lots of efforts in making these videos for you on everyday basis. And it is free for you, but also motivates me to put up better content and try to make the solutions as easy as possible. So you understand them in a better way. Let's see how to find the value of this limit of the entire expression that we have here. Now, if I have this entire expression with me, if I just substitute the value of x as 0 first everywhere to check, what I can see here is if I put sine of 0, Sine of 0, we know it is 0, 2 times 0. Absolute value of 0 is also 0. So 2 times 0 gives you 0. e raised to 0 basically gives you 1 minus 2 times mod of sine x, which is 0 here again. So sine 0, which is 0. So 2 times of 0 minus 1 divided by x squared. So that is 0 squared. So what you get here is 1 minus 1, which is 0. And denominator is also 0. And when I am getting 0 over 0 form here for this expression, putting x equals to 0 everywhere, what I understand is basically this is an indeterminate form. So when I have this as an indeterminate form, what I can do further to solve this question is I can apply my L'Hopital's rule. So I have been given the expression like this. Let's use that. Limit extends to 0, e raised to 2 mod of sine x. So if I write it, limit extends to 0. e raised to 2 mod of sine x minus 2 times mod of sine x minus 1 divided by x squared. Now, I have this x square, but here if I see in the numerator, I have these all expressions of sine x. So what I will do here is I can write this also further as limit extends to 0. With x square, I'm splitting that x square on the other side. With that x square, I'm taking in the numerator sine square x. So if I'm multiplying by sine square x, this entire expression, I should divide by that also. So sine square x here as well. This gives you e raised to 2 mod of sine x minus 2 mod of sine x minus 1. So further, if I try to solve this, limit extends to 0. e raised to 2 mod of sine x minus 2 mod of sine x minus 1. This sine square x, when it is a square, it's always going to be a positive value. So I can also write this as mod of sine x whole square into this. If I take a separate limit, limit extends to 0, sine square x divided by x square. So this I know now this is going to turn out. We know limit extends to 0, sine x divided by x is 1. So sine square x divided by x square is also going to become 1. This entire thing is going to become 1. Now let's try to focus on solving this particular equation. Now if I see here, every term is having mod of sine x. So if I use the idea of substitution and substitute something there. So let's substitute mod of sine x equals to t. So once I have that as my substitution, if I see my values of limits, your x was tending to 0. So if I put x as 0, I get sine 0. Sine 0 is 0, so t is 0. So I get from here limit, t tends to 0. Your expression in this case becomes e raised to 2t minus 2t minus 1 
divided by t square. So I get from here e raised to 2t minus 2t minus 1 divided by t square into the limit of the entire expression that was there will become 1. So if I see here again, if I substitute the values of t here in this question as 0, I get e raised to 0, which is 1, minus 2 into 0, which is 0, and 1. So 1 and minus 1 becomes 0. And this is 0 square, which is also 0. So you still get 0 over 0 form. So now if you apply a L'Hopital's rule here, let's see what I get. So if I apply my L'Hopital's rule here, what do I get here is, I can take the derivative of the numerator separately. That gives you e raised to 2t into 2 minus derivative of 2t, which is 2, minus derivative of 1, which is 0 divided by derivative of t square, which is 2t. So further, if I try to solve this, it's multiplied with 1. So anything multiplied with 1 is the particular same expression. So I get from here 2 e raised to 2t, yeah, limit t tends to 0 also. So here I can write limit t tends to 0, 2 e raised to 2t minus 2 divided by 2. So from here, if I see, I get limit t tends to 0, e raised to t, sorry, 2t minus 1 divided by t. Because that 2 which is there comes common and gets cancelled with this 2. So you get e raised to 2t minus 1 divided by t. If I put the value of t as 0 again, I get this is e raised to 0 which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0 and denominator is already 0. So you still have 0 over 0 form. And when you still have 0 over 0 form, I can further use L'Hopital's rule to take the derivative of this entire expression as well. So if I use that, I get e raised to 2t into 2 and minus 1, which is present derivative of that is 0, divided by derivative of t, which is present, that also becomes 1. So I get from here 1 and limit t tends to 0. So if I do that, I get the answer for this question as 2 e raised to 2t limit t tends to 0. Now if I substitute the value of limit of t as 0, I get from here 2 e raised to 0, which is 2 into 1, which is 2. So answer for the question becomes the value of the limit is equal to 2. And if I see the answer choice that matches here with the question, it is option D. So D becomes a correct answer for the question that is given to us here. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions, which deals with the ideas of using the rules of limits. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing on everyday basis, Please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel and share this channel with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of questions on JWE so they can also take the benefit from these questions that we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.